All right, guys. Day one, coming up to a close. It has been interesting. Once again, I gotta turn this light down. There we go. <laughs> Man, so my first day on MDI, MDI multiple daily injections, uh, something I didn't get to show you guys in the last video is this thing right here. This is what I'm using, the InPen, made by Companion Medical. They're pretty cool. Um, essentially, the app that is connected to that insulin pen, uh, it has a calculator inside of it. So I put in my grams of carbohydrates, I put in my current blood sugar, and it calculates, including the insulin on board that I may or may not have, how much insulin I should give myself. It tells me that, and then I dial it into the pen. So I'll show you guys. I finally get to use my, uh, my Myabetic Sling for actual insulin pens. I've literally just had my wallet and my blood sugar tester in here for like a year. <laughs> so now, check it out, I get to, and there's little pen needles everywhere. That's my new thing that I have to deal with. I totally forgot about how they just get everywhere. But, got my in pen, uh oh, it's clicking. Let's get that back down to zero. Um, but, I'm gonna show you guys real quick what this looks like. Sorry for the noises. So this is my in pen, right? Pull this apart. It, it, it looks almost, it, almost identical to the uh, the quick pens, the Humalog insulin pens, those sort of things. So you see here is a cartridge. I'll, sh I'll try to move it and see if I can get this to focus. So you can see there's a cartridge in there. Uh, you change that out every time that it runs out. And right here we've got the dial so I can focus on it. There we go. Depending on how many units I want to give, so it's very, very similar to an insulin pen. Um, you know what, if you guys want me to make tutorials on this, on my experience with it, drop a comment below. Let me know uh, if I should talk about how to pair the Bluetooth or how to change the, the insulin out. You know, like if there's tutorials that you think would be beneficial, let me know in the comments. I can make one of those later this week then, if that would be beneficial. But I'm gonna show you guys my blood sugars for my first day. Be forewarned, they're not perfect and it was, interesting. Uh, I also want to mention, as I talked about in previous videos, I'm using this guy. So, um, I was going to show you my my day day one blood sugars, but instead, I'm going to wait until I have a couple days logged in here, and then I'll show you guys kind of day one, day two, day three, what those blood sugars look like, so you can kind of see how I use the Trending Health Journal, which again, if you're looking to grab one of these, which I highly recommend, head to TrendingHealthJournal.com. But for now, I'm going to do something that I have not done ever on video, maybe once or twice. I'm going to show you guys my CGM graph because I want you to know I'm not perfect. And while I may have mastered blood sugars in the pump, this first day I knew was going to be rough. And uh, I'm going to get back to a good routine, right? Good blood sugars. Uh, but I'll show you that even just the last three hours is like, what happened there? You can see it went up and then down and then up and now it's coming back down again. Reason being, uh, I noticed earlier on today, and I'll show you the 24 hour graph in a second. Oh boy. Um, I realized this morning that my basal was clearly not strong enough. Now, with that knowledge, for breakfast, lunch, and now for dinner most likely, I've been giving myself a little bit of extra insulin for my meal time to take care of what I was missing from my Lantus, my long acting insulin. So that's kind of why it's up and down and up and down, because for the meals, I would drop down a little bit low, and then as time would go on, there would be not enough basil, so it would go back up and, you know, correct, and it's just been kind of a little bit of a roller coaster day. Not terrible, thankfully, uh, but I'll show you guys what that looks like, because last night, as I mentioned in the last video, uh, there was a, a little bit of a tricky scenario where my blood sugar was high, then I had to get it down to have a good testing place to start to test with, um, and then obviously now... We are uh, sitting almost 24 hours into my test. So, and some of you are like, Matt, these numbers look pretty good still. I know, I'm very picky. Uh, I like to know why fluctuations happen. That's why I'm running this test. But here's my 24 hour graph. So not terrible, honestly. But this morning shot up to about 249. And uh, let's see if that's correct. 216, wait, 209. Oh, that was last night. Last night, 216, that's fun. So here we got the uh, the secondary high was at 11.50 a.m. 251 was my highest. Oh, nope, 253. So that was rough. Um, but as you can see, still pretty stable. So my basal is close, right? It's getting there. 
Uh, I gave exactly what my pump was giving me at the, the full basal for 24 hours, and that's what I was told to do by my endo. You give, you look at your pump settings, see how much basal insulin you're receiving per 24 hours, and that is what you inject with your Lantus, your Traceba, whatever it is, and then you adjust from there. And then for most people, they require about 20% more Lantus, Traceba, whatever your uh, MDI option is for long acting insulin, than you would on the pump. So you end up taking a little bit more with the MDI than you would on the pump. It's not to say it's better or worse, that's just the, the nature of it. So um, that's what my 24 hour graph looks like this morning. Had a bit of a rough start. Um, I injected more insulin than I needed and I still went all the way up to 253. So use that as an excuse to get some chores done because I knew that would bring my blood sugar down. Had to give a correction in addition to that. Went for one run, kind of came down, but not really. Went for another run. Then it came down a bit more, took my shower, and it, I got back down in range by lunch. It's at 133 at lunch, and then I noticed even after I injected for my lunch, I was starting to cruise up before I even took my first bite. So I knew I had to pre-bolus a bit longer, and uh, all these strategies coming together to help me have that good midsection of the day. You know, I was able to kind of regroup and, and get that going, but obviously it still presents a little bit of a challenge for me to transition. So this is day one. I anticipated having some rougher blood sugars today. I made sure I was in a good mental state for that a couple days ago. I was like, all right, Matt, you know that you have perfect blood sugars like most of the time, right? I'll be in range for 24, 48, 72 hours, but you're not going to be in range for the next 24. You have to accept that. So I did. I understood that I'm not going to have perfect blood sugars, especially the first day, but probably the first couple of days. Uh, this morning, for example, my Dexcom alarm woke me up at 6.40 a.m. saying I had a high blood sugar. So I woke up, gave a correction. That was my first dose ever with the, uh, the in-pen. I had to figure out how to use it while I was still tired and sleepy. And gave my correction, went back to bed. Woke up at the same number, essentially. But uh, this is all figuring it out. This is me going through the process. And I want to take you through that journey with me. So that is my documentation for today. Like I mentioned... I'm using my Trending Health Journal that I put together, which you can find at TrendingHealthJournal.com. The tool that I'm using, I'm using Lantus for my long acting, and I'm using this guy right here, the InPen, for my short acting. I've got a Humalog cartridge in there, and this enables me to keep track of my insulin on board. It tells me when I gave insulin, how much insulin I gave, what my blood sugar was at that moment, so it acts in a way like a disconnected pump, which is pretty cool. So. Um, this isn't sponsored by them, but I, I want to shout out to Innovative Technology. I love seeing innovative tech being pushed in the diabetes world. We've got this guy right here that's been an absolute life changer. Dexcom, CGM, there's also the Freestyle Libre, the Eversense. Tons of new equipment out there. There's many different types of pumps and just so many incredible companies putting together tech to help us out. So know what's available, know what's out there, do your research but find the best tools for you. I'm not here to say MDI is better. I'm not here to say pumping is better. There are pros and cons, right? With pumps, you have tighter control, but you also have a device connected to you 24 seven, literally at the hip if you're not wearing an Omnipod. With MDI, you're free, right? But you have a little bit less control, a little bit less of a tight control over your blood sugars because there's less options. You can't microdose. You can't set temp basal like you could on a pump. So. Find what's best for you. This is me experimenting. I don't think I made it clear enough on the last video. The reason that I'm doing this entire phase, right? This testing phase, this experiment. I'm experimenting on a few different uh, theories that I had surrounding different types of insulin, different types of insulin therapy, and uh, how they are impacted by exercise, diet, sleep, all this kind of stuff. And I want to use that knowledge that I gained through this experiment to better the coaching programs that I have for type 1 diabetics and make them even more incredible. So I'm jumping into the world of my clients who, who use MDI currently so I can better understand what they're going through but also better build out my programs to help out everyone and just to create the most valuable experience ever uh, so that we can all live with a higher quality of life while maintaining stable blood sugars. So that's my goal with this. I'm very excited to see how it goes, see if my methods, my formulas work, and how well they work, uh, and what tweaks that I need to make. So I, I invite you to come along this journey with me, watch the videos. I'm going to be uploading probably daily, 
and uh, showing you guys just what I'm going through, being real with you about the blood sugars that I encounter. I just showed you a blood sugar of 253. That's not something that I'm proud of, but you know what? It's part of the process, and I want you to know what I'm going through. I'm not going to pretend that it's all perfect and that it was the most seamless transition ever. No, I was nervous last night. I'll be real with you. I was nervous going back to pens because I understood I wasn't going to have perfect blood sugars and it was going to be a bit of a learning process as I transitioned. And you get to be part of that. So drop a comment below. Let me know if you want me to make some uh, tutorials on the in pen so you guys can jump into that and not have to worry about what I went through at 6.40 this morning uh, where it, it wasn't working properly because I didn't know how to use it yet. Um, and then also grab your trending journal. For sure, grab that. It has changed my clients' lives, it's changed my life, it's how I got into this tight control. And that's the whole reason I made it into an actual physical book instead of holding on to it for myself. So grab that journal and uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. That journal again is available at trendinghealthjournal.com. The link's in the description. Uh, you can even just go to the link and have a look at it. That's not a commitment, but just have a look around and uh, get an idea of what it does for you. So. Hope these videos are helpful to you guys. Uh, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so all the videos are going to be going first. So you'll be notified first and we'll be putting out some more exciting content in the beginning of 2020 next year, uh, which is in a couple weeks. So, hope you guys are having an awesome day. Always uh, push for more, but prioritize your quality of life. And as always, keep up the fight.